Good evening. Welcome as we gather in the house of our God to worship him. This weekend we are observing Proper 27 with this message from God's word, the Lord Jesus is coming again. And we don't know when that will be. So the theme for our service this evening is be ready for the day of deliverance. The order of service that we're following this evening is a version of the common service. And let's begin. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God and Savior, you have set the final day and hour when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us ever watchful for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
a lesson from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 1 through 6. Wake, awake, clothe yourself with strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, Jerusalem, you holy city, for never again will the uncircumcised and the unclean enter you. Shake off the dust. Get up and take your seat, Jerusalem. Loosen the chains from your neck, you captive daughter of Zion. Yes, this is what the Lord says. You were sold for nothing and you will be redeemed without money. Yes, this is what the Lord God says. In the beginning, my people went down to Egypt to stay there for a while. Later, Assyria oppressed them without a cause. Now what do I have here, declares the Lord. Indeed, my people have been taken away for nothing. Their rulers howl with mockery, declares the Lord. My name is continually despised all day. Therefore, my people will know my name. So on that day, they will know that I am the one, the one who is saying, here I am. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Be alert, because you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Alleluia. Please stand. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish ones took their lamps, they did not take any oil with them, but the wise took oil in their containers with their lamps. While the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, No, there may not be enough for us and for you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were away buying oil, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other virgins also came and said, Lord, Lord, let us in. But he answered, Amen, I tell you. I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. To you, o Let us now join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We will now continue with the hymn of the day, Wake, Awake, for Night is Flying.
Grace and peace are yours. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I want to consider with you this evening is recorded in the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Concerning the times and dates, brothers, there is no need to write to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying, peace and security, destruction will suddenly come on them, like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will certainly not escape. But you, brothers, are not in the dark, so that this day takes you by surprise like a thief. For you are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. So then, let us not sleep like everyone else, but rather let us remain alert and sober. To be sure, those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, 
Let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. You see, God did not appoint us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, wake up, you're burning daylight. Have you ever heard it put that way before? You know, it's an interesting way of putting it. It's a short way of saying, the sun's up, it's daytime, but the longer you sleep, the less hours of daylight you have to do the things that you need to do and to get to the places you need to get to. Of course, if you think it's a struggle to wake someone up, like your kids... Let me tell you about one of my sons during his teenage years at home. We would wake him up. He would actually have his eyes open and speak to us. And then we walk back in his room some 10 or 15 minutes later, and he's fast asleep again. The second announcement would be louder. Wake up! And this time... Stay awake. Stay awake. That's what we hear the Apostle Paul urging in today's reading. And it's fitting. For we have now come to the time in the church year in which we are focusing especially on a big day that is coming. The last day. Judgment day. The day the Lord Jesus comes again. Paul urged his readers, and as we look at his words tonight, he's also urging us, stay awake for that day. That urging is needed because, as Paul points out in the reading, there are two kinds of people. There are night people, and there are daylight people. So who do you think are those daylight people? Who are we? What warning do you and I hear from Paul's words? What encouragement is he giving us? Let's sum up what Paul says in this reading with this thought. Stay awake as daylight people. Stay awake as daylight people who expect the unexpected. You hear that a thief has been hitting the houses in the neighborhood. You want to be awake and ready to prevent him from taking your stuff. So when? When is he coming? You don't know. A thief doesn't give you a courtesy call to tell you on what day and time he's coming. A thief comes unexpectedly. A pregnant woman knows that her due date is coming near. She wants to finish things that she needs to get done before the labor pains start. But when? She doesn't know. Those labor pains will come suddenly, whether in the middle of the night or in the middle of the store. Labor pains come unexpectedly. These are the two illustrations Paul uses in our reading to describe how the day of the Lord will come. The day the Lord will come in judgment against those who reject Him, but also with deliverance for His people. Is it appropriate for Paul to describe the Lord's coming as 
like a thief in the night? Sure it is. For that's how the, exactly how the Lord Jesus described it in Luke's Gospel. But know this. If the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. You also be ready. Because the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you are not expecting Him. But then Paul talks about certain people. Spiritual night people who are saying peace and security. And by the way, here they are not expressing what is good for society. Rather, with this, they are expressing that they don't think this day is such a big deal and assume day after day that things are just going to go on like normal. They will not be ready when destruction will suddenly come on them like labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will certainly not escape. Stay awake. Be ready always for this day. Of course, Paul is not urging, and I am not suggesting that you dare not fall asleep until the day of Jesus' return. Our bodies do need sleep. And yet our spiritual lives our soul and our faith does not. Paul's warning here is that we do not lull our spiritual life to sleep. Our Gospel reading, Jesus' parable of the ten virgins, help us with this understanding. In general, Jesus is picturing two groups. A not ready group and a ready group. The basic attitude of the not ready group is, I'm good with what I got. Yeah, I heard God's word in the past, and that's all I need. I can concern myself with other matters of life because I don't need any more spiritual help. Without that spiritual help, the light of the lamp of faith gets dimmer and dimmer until it eventually dies out. But the attitude of the ready group is, I will always need God's help. I always need to believe and know and be certain that I have a Savior from sin and eternal condemnation. This is the group that realizes that the Gospel in Word and Sacrament keeps that light of faith going. Constantly hearing God's truth that His Son came into the world to take your place in living that God demanded perfect life for you and in suffering the punishment for all of your sins keeps your faith strong. Receiving often His true body, which He gave into death, and His true blood that poured out for your forgiveness keeps your faith ready. By faith, you, like the Thessalonians, know well that the day of Christ's return is unexpected. No one knows the day or the hour. But by faith, you also know well that just as Jesus fulfilled God's promise and came once to save you, He will keep His promise and come again on that last judgment day. By faith, you expect the unexpected day of the Lord's coming. Here's the encouragement. The daylight for that spiritual help to always keep you spiritually awake and ready 
is now. You see, the purpose for coming to church and at this time in history for watching the services online is not to look religious to impress others. It's to keep you ready. We urge you to read daily the Bible and get into Bible study. Not because we want to put added stress on your busy schedules, but to keep you ready. You and I need that warning and encouragement. For each one of us has that human tendency to enjoy relaxing and being lazy. Well, you know, at proper times that may be beneficial physically. But spiritually, it's a big danger. So you think that you can take time away from God's Word? You think you don't need the Lord's Supper all that often? Watch out. Those are signs of the onset of spiritual slumber and sluggishness. And then, it's night. Lights out. You won't be ready. It's daylight now. God's spiritual help of His Word and sacrament is here for you now. Stay awake and keep your eyes open to what Jesus came the first time to do for you. Daylight people hold on to that truth that the Savior, by His life, death, and resurrection, has set them free from sin and punishment. That's important for you so that you are always expecting his second coming and what that means for you. What does that day mean for you? It means your eternity. And knowing that affects the way you live now. You see, staying awake not only means keeping your eyes open, it also means being active. That's also what daylight people do. Daylight people are those who live for another life. Here too, Paul is encouraging living for another life in stark contrast to night people. He gives another illustration. To be sure, those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. Yes, these are activities of night people. And yes, Paul is talking in terms of physical, earthly activities here. But he is also implying that we are to look at this in a spiritual sense. What are the activities of spiritual night people? How do they live? They're living only for themselves. They are living only for life on this earth. They are indulging only in the things for earthly life, which relates to getting drunk at night. And so they are in the dark. They are unaware of God's Word. They remain blind to the importance of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which relates to sleeping at night. In contrast, Paul says that believers belong to the day and to the, uh, to the light and to the day. Daylight people do daytime activities. 
Listen to what Paul writes. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Daylight believers are clear-headed and aware (coughs) that they are in a battle against spiritual enemies who attack their spiritual lives. But believers have God-given armor. They live by faith in the Savior. They live by love for God and others that comes from faith. And they live in the sure hope of the Lord delivering them from sin and from this evil world. Daylight believers live in God's Word to protect and defend their spiritual lives. Paul continues, You see, God did not appoint us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Daylight believers are clear-headed and aware of what God lovingly wants for them. Why God lovingly sent His Son for them. And what their judgment will be on that day. God's salvation means that believers won't hear Jesus judge them to be guilty. And so you deserve God's eternal anger and punishment. But rather, not guilty. Because I delivered you from sin and punishment. Daylight believers live in God's saving love and are thankful for it. (coughs) Then Paul says, He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. Daylight believers are clear-headed and fully aware of what's going to happen to them when their life on this earth is over. Here Paul is talking about being awake or asleep, not in a spiritual sense, but in a physical sense. Either we are going to be alive or dead when Jesus comes again. But no matter. The Bible throughout clearly teaches (coughs) <coughs> that Jesus, when Jesus comes again, He will powerfully raise all the dead and gather all His believers to live with Him forever in heaven. Daylight believers live now knowing that what is most important for them is that eternal life. Here's the point. Spiritual night people live by the old adage, live like there's no tomorrow. But Paul's words here are encouraging you and me as daylight people to live knowing that there is an eternal tomorrow for you in and with Jesus Christ. My friends, the time for daylight activities is now. I know that a big temptation for any one of us is to live for ourselves. After all, we see other people living that way. We see people who are enjoying it and who are presently being successful by living that way. But then again, will such people be ready? Will they escape the judgment? No. So what are the spiritual activities of daylight people? Here's one. Live for Christ, who has gained eternal life for you. Keep listening to Him and following Him. For now you want to thank Him for saving you. And you do that 
by serving Him in all that you do, actively live for Him first instead of yourself. Here's another. Defend the gospel and protect your faith. The gospel is God's truth of your forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life in Christ. Don't let other messages make you uncertain. Don't let other lifestyles lull you into spiritual slumber. Actively live a life in which the gospel predominates and keeps your faith holding on to the Lord who came once for you and is coming again for you. Here's a third. Arouse the night people around you. You don't let loved ones go on sleeping when they need to be awake. Or to keep getting drunk when you know the physical harm that causes. Now is the time to wake up the people around you to the Gospel. Now is the time to be concerned for their spiritual welfare so that they do not lose out on the Lord's gift of eternal life. Actively live to support the Gospel with your words to others, with your prayers for others, and with your gifts and offerings for the spread of the Gospel here and around the world. Paul ends this reading by urging, therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as you are doing. As much as I hate to say this, Paul here is not talking about nudging your husband when he is starting to nod off during the sermon. He is talking about how you and I have a special responsibility toward our fellow believers, our fellow daylight people. We are to keep reminding each other to stay awake, to keep expecting that unexpected day of Christ's return, and to keep living for that eternal life that He has gained for us. After all, who knows how much time we have left. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, once you came here in lowliness to set us free from our sins and to establish peace between us and our God, we have your sure promise that you will come again in great power to judge all hearts and to fill your church with eternal glory. We wait for your return with eagerness and joy. Come quickly to take us to the place in our Father's house which you have prepared for all who love you. To that end, dear Savior, keep us awake spiritually. Help us to be prepared at all times for your coming. Keep our hearts filled with true contrition and faith. Overcome our doubts. Cast sin from our lives. Keep us from embracing the treasures and sinful pleasures offered by the world. Fill us with humility that we may never trust our own works to merit heaven, but rely fully on you to save us. For that reason, cause the Holy Spirit to work powerfully in us with his grace, 
through word and sacrament. Redeemer of all, awaken our community, our nation, and the whole world to the truth of your return. Cause the bright beams of your saving gospel to shine in the hearts of people everywhere, to arouse them from spiritual slumber, from the hold of sin, and from the darkness of unbelief. Move us, your people, to show concern for the spiritual welfare of those who are wandering from the faith, and to offer comfort and encouragement to those who har- whose hearts are heavy with worry, sickness, fear, and doubt. What great joy is ours as we look forward to the blessed day when you, our Savior and Lord, will appear in glory to raise the dead and judge the world. On that day, we will finally be, del- be delivered from this veil of tears. By your Spirit, may our joy never diminish and our faith never weaken as we wait for the time you will come to take the church you love to your heavenly home, and we join the eternal celebration. We pray for these things, Lord Jesus, and in your name we also join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. As we close by singing the hymn, Lord, when your glory I shall see. Once again, good evening to all of you. 
first of all, I'd like to express our thanks to the musical ensemble who were uh, who added uh, to the music, the beautiful music for tonight's service. Um, and while you here have the bulletin with their names on it, uh, those of you at home who are watching online uh, aren't aware of who participated in this. Uh, and I'm going to try to guess because they're all scattered now. But we had Pastor Jacob Rich on trumpet. Our fifth and sixth grade teacher, Rachel Bender, playing the alto sax. On cymbals was our principal, 7th and 8th grade teacher, Mr. Ian Paulson. And on timpani is our kindergarten teacher, uh, Marissa Shirey. And of course, uh, husband Joe, 3rd and 4th grade teacher, uh, played the organ. Um, Thank you all for what you did for us this evening. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Tuesday. Uh, Just a reminder, we have uh, elders, trustees, and Board of Education at 6 o'clock, Church Council at 7 o'clock. Wednesday, once again, uh, the Joshua Bible Study continues. You can come at 10 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, Next weekend, God's Word reminds us that when the Lord comes again, He is going to be... requiring an accounting of us of how we use the gifts that he has given us in our life, especially for the good of his kingdom. An important message for us to hear also as this church year is quickly coming to a close. Thanksgiving baskets, once again, if you would like to donate uh, for the food purchased for the Thanksgiving baskets, you can either drop it off here at the church office, or you could also um, send it in by mail or even uh, use our online giving uh, link on the website to donate. Uh, Please consider that. We are also looking for names of family members who may be in need of a Thanksgiving basket this year. If you have one of those names, please let us know. Uh, could be Sandy in the church office, Pastor Rich, Gail McFarlane, Royce Crewall, any one of them. Let them know. Um, just so you know, um, this week MLS closed its in-class instruction have, and has gone to... Um, what is it, distance learning, virtual learning uh, for the students. Uh, The musical was coming up in a couple of weeks. They have postponed that and are moving it to the spring. So uh, please be aware of that. And finally, I wanted to uh, just start planting this in your mind. Uh, For social distancing purposes, we are adding a service for Thanksgiving. We will have two services on Wednesday, one at 3.30 in the afternoon, the other at 7 o'clock in the evening, and then we will also have our Thursday morning 9 o'clock service. Please be aware of that. Thank you for coming this evening. Lord's blessings on your week.